Our next guest is David Munn. David is the owner of Floasis. And if you remember a few weeks back, we had Nas on from the Orgasm Cult, who was talking about the salt tanks. Mm -hmm. And so we started talking about we should try it. And I said, okay, I'll do it. And I stumbled into Floasis, which is here in Atlanta. But there are places around the country or around the world where you can do this. But David is from Atlanta. I just met David the other day. Welcome, David. Thank you. Thank you. So how did you get on to float tanks? Like what what led you to be the owner of Floasis? Um, about, uh, about six years ago, I broke my back. Um, and I was a hairdresser for 29 years. And being on your feet for 10 hours a day with a broken back was impossible. So I started looking at ways to, uh, you know, to mend myself through uh, yoga and exercise and uh, certainly not pills. You know, it's an easy path to go on. And we came across flotation therapy, my wife and I. And um, every time we do it, we just kind of have these dissatisfying experiences. Uh, not so much with the tank itself. Of course, I love the, the experience of floating. But really, it was more about like the fit and finish of the, uh, uh, the float tank centers out there. My wife has a medical background. She works in plastic surgery. And, uh, you know, I've worked at high end salons for a long time. So wanted to bring that aesthetic to it. We just uh, we just fell in love with floating and wanted to give the best possible version of float therapy to Atlanta. David, can you explain to everyone what exactly it is? Yeah, absolutely. So flotation therapy, um, it's also called sensory deprivation therapy. And we have soundproof rooms that the lights go down. And then we have these massive bathtubs with uh, 200 plus gallons of a saline filled solution. If you, wow. And if you're just listening, check out the video <laughs> portion. It's wild. 1,200 pounds of salt per two ga 200 gallons of water. So it's seven times more dense than the Dead Sea and it floats you effortlessly. But what's cool is the room and the solution are warm to your skin's temperature, about 97 degrees. So when you're floating in the dark with no sound, your brain can't detect what's in contact with the solution of what isn't. So it kind of fools you into thinking that you're floating in outer space. And it very much feels like that, too. And how long is a regular floating session? We do 60 and 90 minute sessions. Uh, personally, I've done up to three hours, but uh, typical is wow. an hour. And did it help your back? A lot. A lot. Yeah. I mean, it's there's, there's no panacea, but... Um, to take all the compression off your spine uh, and to have that much magnesium, which is contributed by the, the Epsom salt, it, it's very, very helpful. Well, I, I went in and I was not reluctant, but, you know, anytime you do something new, you know, it's kind of trippy. You stand there and you look at this massive tank. It looks like a clamshell. <laughs> it, it, I mean, it looks it, – it, and it's much bigger in person than yeah. – than looking at it here on the video. And, I, you know, he goes through the spiel of what to expect, kind of like what he just said, you know, some of the things telling you about it. And then you're, you know, you're left in that room to do it. You know, like you, you take all your clothes off and you get in and you don't really know what to expect because, you know, he's gone or whoever has set you up. I got in this thing. And you put, you know, one foot in and immediately when you drop yourself into it, you go up. Wow. So immediately you almost floating. levitate. You can't drown. No, you don't go under. It's the weirdest thing. Even if you fall asleep. Yes. Your head stays where it is. So imagine you get in, you immediately float, levitating style, and you just got to find a place for your arms. That was the weirdest thing for me is like, where do you put your arms? You put them on, you know, across your chest and I ended up putting them like in the touchdown position um, in the tank because that felt the best. Because your body, think about it, your body is relieved of all pressures. So you're just like floating there. Mm -hmm. And Barnes, how long did you stay in? I did 90 minutes and it seemed like about three minutes. Really? So the yeah. first five minutes you lay there and Leslie, I know you're claustrophobic. Cubby, are you? Yeah, I am. I was going to ask you that. If, if, you're a if you're a claustrophobic person, is it, is it for you? Right. Well, right. I didn't feel that way at all. You pull the yeah. tank down and you leave it open just a little bit to let the humidity kind of out because the room is, mm -hmm. you know, 90 degrees as it is. And then the tank is 97 or whatever. And so you never feel weird like that because 
at first there's lighting on, so you're seeing reflections on the porcelain, almost like if you're in a big toilet bowl. You know how that glossy? <laughs> sure. You know how the white glossy? Well, there's lights mm-hmm. in the tank, and there's, like, sounds going on, like nature. And that slowly fades away, and at the, about the five-minute mark, it's pitch black. And what it feels like is that you were lost at sea in somewhere in the world, and you can't see anything, and all you're left with is you hear your breathing. Mm. Wow. You and never, your heartbeat. You hear your breathing Sometimes. and your heartbeat. And yeah. you know how when you're in a pool and you just stick your face right above the water, but your ears are still kind of down in it? That's when you hear the, you know, mm-hmm. you hear the breathing. And so all of a sudden, your mind just starts going places. I never fell asleep, I don't think, but I definitely went deep into some state of something. Um, and then it ends. And then and you, you're like, wow. You feel refreshed, and you feel like you've just been through like some 15-hour meditation of some sort. I mean, no phone, no noise, no nothing in this tank, and you just hear slightest water movement of yourself, like if you readjust or you move. Mm Mm-hmm. But the next day, I felt more productive than I have in probably, I mean, I don't know how long. It was the strangest. Energized. Energized to a, an amazingly strange level. Is that something that's normal, David? Yeah, very common, actually. But I, I think the, the thing that you're talking about up front is this perception that people have about float therapy. Because in pop culture, we've seen float tanks in the context of you know, The Simpsons and Altered States um in uh, stranger things uh, uh trying to think of some of the other movies like minority report um it it always is kind of linked up with this kind of psychedelic experience like you know the guys from the big bang theory go in and all of a sudden they're just tripping balls for an hour and come out you know <laughs> when it's really not like that at all you're not going into the upside down to to fight monsters um i mean maybe figuratively um uh, but it, it, it's it's a profoundly relaxing spa experience, and it's it's funny how people have this perception of what it actually is. Um, but what you just described is more common that people who feel like they're going to be claustrophobic aren't, because the tank can fit somebody who's seven foot four. It's massive, and then when you get in it, it's even bigger. Um, it. Uh, it's just soothing in a way that you haven't experienced before. It, it removes gravity. So when you're in the solution, it's, as I, as I said, it's seven times more dense than the Dead Sea. So you can just let every bit of your fiber relax into it and have that weight carried. So it takes all the pressure off your uh, central nervous system and your parasympathetic nervous system. And it gives you a break, uh, really, like you, you haven't experienced. You can you pee just, in it? Say again? Can you pee in it? Can you pee in it? Well, yeah. I mean, technically, you could pee in it, but I don't prefer it. <laughs> but you know, some people might get lost in the relaxation. That's right. true, Just let Cubby. things flow. Is this what happens to you? Get lost Cubby, in relaxation, for- wet yourself? <laughs> let us know. We're going to talk to your wife about I mean, that. I don't, I don't want to watch a movie with Cubby. <laughs> I do have a question for you. you. You opened during a pandemic, which is a bold move. I mean, what are the protocols in place and, and cleaning it, and how does it work? The, the, the nature of our business is really clean to begin with. So the solution is, uh, is a very sterile uh, solution. It's got, uh, as I mentioned, it's over half a ton of Epsom salt. So that's naturally bacteria free. And then the particular tanks that we purchased are the best in the world. They have three, like uh, it's like 12 micron filters, like one twelfth the width of a human hair, three of those plus a UV bulb. And then also it's much cleaner just because you don't wear clothes. Uh, clothes are actually a big contaminant for tool, uh, for pools. Uh, we don't allow children, which are another big contaminant for everything. Um, and we also, uh, you know, your face doesn't go under ever, which uh, those are the things that really actually contribute to the, the, uh, uh, the swimming pools. So you don't get that with the, uh, with the float tanks. You know, I've been in a salt cave. But oh, yeah. to me, this yeah. sounds like more beneficial because you're actually in it and you're, you know, you're in the water with the magnesium and everything else. Yeah. Um, you know, salt caves don't have a lot of science behind them. They feel mm-hmm. good. But what they claim, you know, the allergens and, and uh, benefits for lung diseases and stuff haven't really been proven. That's a big, big difference between float tanks. There's been over 80 studies over the last 50 years, including actually one that just came out 
two weeks ago from the Laureate Institute of um, Brain Research, where they did a uh, uh, double blind with uh, the control group being a gravity chair versus 90 minutes with a float tank. And mm -hmm. they did an MRI before and after. This was 24 for participants for each group. And the MRI findings from the float tank were significantly different than the, uh, the control group and just the chair. David, what happens when at one point I kept feeling my head kind of going back further and I had to kind of readjust, like stretch my shoulders? Is it that the, the no gravity thing is just pulling you? Like, is your body trying to react to something because it's in a state of no control, really? I think more that's a center of gravity thing. I find that there's a, a sweet spot with where I keep my head. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're right. It does take a bit of adjustment there, but um, uh, they actually off we also offer uh, head support because oh. some people can't use get used to that. What does a session cost? And do you have packages? I mean, do you recommend like if you do it on a regular basis, you feel even better? This really is meant as a as a practice more than it is just an experience uh, because it's it's meditation at the, the core of it. Uh, so. With prolonged use, one of those studies showed that you can actually shrink the gray matter in the amygdala, which is the flight or uh, fight, uh, lowering cortisol levels. Uh, you know, it's helpful for PTSD, anxiety, and all that. So, yeah, it's uh, 60 minutes is, is uh, our price is $89, although we offer an attractive intro price at $69. We have uh, <laughs> 90 minutes. We do. <laughs> Leslie got it. Thanks, Leslie. We got <laughs> <laughs> the other two guys. Um, so the uh, and ninety minutes, which I recommend for new people, uh, is eighty nine dollars. So, but uh, packages, of course, memberships, of course, and we do try and encourage people to float at least twice a month to get the benefit for, from it. You know, I know Cubby mentioned opening during a pandemic, but people are really more health conscious now because of the pandemic. So I imagine business has to be pretty good, right? Everyone that's coming in to try us. Is really seems to be enjoying it. We're getting tremendous feedback. We're very much in that phase of outreach to the community and, and trying to let people know what this thing is, because it is. It's also a bit esoteric. So, David, if I'm in there, because I am a bit claustrophobic, so I don't know how I would feel, but if I am in there, is there like a panic button? <laughs> what are you get getting me out from? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, no, that's, it's an odd question, um, <laughs> because it's like a, a soothing spa experience. It's like having a, a panic button for a... Uh, for a massage, massage. or something. You know? Let me out. <laughs> <laughs> Super yeah. Wow. There, there is one. There is one. If, uh, if you need me to come in and drag your naked ass out of, uh, out of the tank. <laughs> well, that thanks for that mental picture. It. Wow. Appreciate it. <laughs> Where's the panic Woo. button for that? Pretty incredible. What an experience. I mean, it, it was nothing like. I mean, I didn't know what to expect. It was, it was, let me show you some of that footage. Cause you know, Cubby, you're, you're naked. And let me show you, this is when I was in about 30 minutes. I'm kidding. Uh, oh, wow. <laughs> you scared me. I was like, oh no, I was covering my no. eyes. <laughs> but check out Floasis in Atlanta. David, thank you for coming on with us. Thanks for having me guys.